When developing your website, your various pages have different purposes. In some cases, you may want to create a unique header to keep the visitor focused on that page content. In other cases, you may want to have navigation, search, or even transparent headers. Fortunately, the Cadence Pro theme provides the opportunity to have conditional headers so you can have the right look for specific pages or posts. In this video, we're going to look at why you may want conditional headers on your website and how you can easily implement this feature. Hi, my name is William Beam. I'm best known for helping creators, course developers, and membership owners create a website and configure their online tools. If you're planning on building a WordPress website or already have one, I have a free WordPress owner's checklist so you can make certain that you've configured everything correctly and documented all the important details of your site. Just visit suburbiapress.com slash WordPress dash owners dash checklist. The link is in the description below. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look inside of WordPress. So when we talk about the header, obviously we're talking about this part up here where you can see that there is a logo and then there are menus. And sometimes you want these menus there, sometimes you don't. In this case, this is a transparent header, meaning that the text is here so the background can show through. And there are different looks on this particular site. You can see this one has an image behind it, so that way it shows up. But there might be some pages where maybe you don't want all this navigation so that they can focus on the content of the page. A pricing page would be a good example. Another example would be something like this page where I've got my privacy policy, but you notice that the white text from that header does not work with this background. Now, of course, I could change the background and then just keep using that transparent header everywhere, but sometimes that's not what you want to do. You want to change the look of the header. So that's why you want to be able to have conditional headers that you can use on different pages or your blog post. So that way they go ahead and show you the look that you're looking for on that page. So how do we do that? Well, let's take a look here. I'm inside the dashboard for this WordPress site. So what we're going to do is we're going to first take a look at our plugins. And the reason for that is because we need to have Cadence Pro installed. So the Cadence theme is free. You can get that. But in order to use certain features, you need to have this Cadence Pro. It is a premium plugin. So it costs something. I've got an affiliate link in the description below. And that way you can go ahead and get that. So it doesn't cost you anything else to use the affiliate link, but I do get a small commission. So we've got that installed. So now we're going to come over here to take a look at the appearance and we're going to come down to cadence. And you can see where it says customize your site. All of these things are available in the free version. The pro add-ons give you a couple of other things. The one that you're looking for in this example is conditional headers. So we're just going to turn that on. Another one we may like is kind of similar is hooked elements. We're not going to go over that right now, but I'll show you inside of the conditional headers, how you decide where these things are going to go is very similar to what you have in hooked elements. So now that we've got that turned on, let's go over to our customizer. So we're inside of the customizer and we want to look at the header. And there's a couple of things we can look at. You can see that there is a logo up here. There's primary navigation showing over here and down below here, this is where you configure what it's going to be. So these are on the main row. That's the logo. That's the primary navigation. And you've got a separate one for tablet and mobile. We'll go over that at another time. Basically, you want to make certain that if you're changing your header on desktop, you also want to make certain that it does what you're expecting on your mobile. Now, the design of this, as I said, is transparent. If we come over here and scroll down, you'll see transparent header. And it says enable transparent header. If we turn this off, it's going to look like this. It's, by default, it has a white background and it's changed the text to dark. So that would be a simple way to work on probably every page. If we click on our privacy policy page, then you'll see we get that same one. But that's not what the design of this page is really about. So we want that transparent header in some places. And you can also choose these other things. Do you want to use this header or the transparent header on posts or pages or the search archives. For now, we're just going to leave that alone. We can take a look at our design. And these are all the options you have for choosing colors. And the site title color and then the navigation colors are set right here. So the initial color is white. This one, the hover color, if I hover over this, you'll see how that kind of dims a little bit. So that gives us our uh, settings right there. So we're not going to change any of those. We're going to come back over here. If you scroll down further, you're going to see where it says 
conditional header. That's what we just enabled in the cadence elements. So I'll turn this on and we're previewing the default header. There is an extra header that's put in here. When you install this, we're not going to do that. We're actually going to create our own. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on add header and you've got an option. You can start with basic. You can copy the default header or you can import one. We'll get to the import a little bit later on. Right now, I'm going to copy the default header because really what I want to do is make this similar, but just omit a few things. So we'll come down here and you can change the name. So we're going to call this uh, legal pages. And then we're going to choose where is this going to show? I want to set this on specific pages. So we'll click this. And this is the section that I mentioned was similar to hooked elements. These various settings are going to tell you where it will show up. So it could be on the entire site, only on the front page. What we want to do is come down and find single pages. And then which pages is going to be? We're going to choose this by individually. It could be based on a group, could be based on the author, but I want to select which pages it's going to be. And this one, you can select one, or you can select multiple if you want to. You just kind of toggle it when you click on and off. So when it's yellow, it's selected. So on the privacy policy page, this is where I'm going to choose something different. And I'm going to select that. So we've got where it's going to happen. If you want to exclude it from something, let's say that you said all pages, but then you want to exclude and or hide it on certain pages, you can do that here. Who's going to be able to see this? That's what the user settings are. Right now, it won't be visible to anybody. We can have it set for all users, but there's other options here. You can see all users logged out or logged in users. And if you have people sign in, let's say for a membership site, you can have the different user roles to see who sees which header. But in this case, it's very basic. We're just going to select all users. And again, you can exclude visibility settings just like you did for the page settings. And you can also have expire settings. So if you enable this, you can have it show only for a certain time frame. This might be handy if you have, maybe you change your header for a sale event, and it's only going to be for a certain amount of time. But in this case, we want to leave this on permanently. So we'll do that. Now I mentioned before that you could import a header. That means that you've already got one design and you could come down here to export the header. And then when you build a new header, you could go ahead and import it. So we'll save that for later. So now I've got all of this set. I want to toggle this on and I'm going to hit publish. Now nothing has changed really on that page yet. If we click on our privacy policy page, it still looks like this. That's because we haven't changed any of the settings down here or the transparency settings. So what we're going to do is take a look at, let's say we're going to change our preview to legal pages. We're going to confirm and save settings. So that way, when we make changes to this, we're going to see what happens. So I'm going to click back on privacy policy. And I'm going to get rid of this option over here because I don't want any navigation on the privacy page other than if they click this, they can go back to the home page. We can come over to our design. We could change things there if we want to, but really what we're looking at is the transparency. So you can see that we're previewing the legal pages. I want to come over here to disable the transparent header. And now we've got this site. So we can publish that. And if we come over here, this is a copy of our page. So if I refresh this now, you can see we've got our header over there. So it's different. Now this section over here is something that we could handle in the page settings for this particular page. This is kind of the default way that it looks, but you could change this around. You could get rid of it. You could change the colors and do anything you want. So now that I've got this over here, I'm not distracted. If I want somebody to actually read the privacy policy and all this stuff that's in here, then there's nothing that's going to take them someplace else. If you are working on something like a sales page or a pricing page, you may want to do something similar. You don't want them going off to different things inside of your header. So this is why a conditional header is really good. It kind of eliminates distractions. So if we come back over here and look at our homepage, we still have our transparent header over here and here. The only place that we're going to have our new uh, conditional header is where we stated it would be, is on the privacy policy page. So that's how it looks. If we decide that we want to 
get this as a default. Maybe you've built your default header and the way you want. You can still come down here to conditional header and legal pages, and we could export this header. And you'll see it asks you, where do you want this to be? So I've got my downloads folder and I'll just go ahead and save that. If we come back over here to our conditional headers, we can add another one. So let me get rid of this. Let's say add header. And we're going to select import. And then we're going to choose a file. So you see that I have imported or I've selected this file. We're going to click import and create new. And now we have another extra header over here. And it did not include these settings. If we look at the header, it'll be the same as the one that I just did. But you can still go ahead and choose where is it going to show. So maybe you want to modify this slightly and then choose different settings for it. And you can go through all of that again. You can change the name. And that's just a quick and easy way to import a header and then customize it the way you want. Again, down here with these settings, you can kind of customize it. So if we want to add something on this side, we could choose any number of things. If we wanted to say, add a button over here and you see how that just popped right up. So, and then you can go ahead and configure that button however you want to. We'll click on this and you'll see all of the settings for the button are here and your design settings, you know, how large do you want it to be and so forth are there. So we'll click on that and I'm going to say, okay, because I'm not really worried about saving that. So if you want to get rid of one of these, for example, this extra header that comes with it, you can just click on that, say remove header, confirm that you want to remove header because that's something that you don't want to accidentally click and then say, oh, I wish I hadn't done that. That's why a good backup is always important. And then we just click publish and we're done. So now we have our default header. So I can switch back to this, confirm. This is only for the preview mode that we're in. And there it is. But if we come over here to this side, there's our default header. So we're previewing that header on whatever pages. But if we come and look at, let's refresh this page, confirming that preview did not change is here. It's just simply letting you look at that in the back end. Although I showed this system using the Cadence Pro theme, you should be able to create something similar in any modern theme, kind of like Astra. So check with your theme for details. If you're interested in Cadence Pro, my affiliate link is in the description below. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful. I'll see you again in the next video.